the single biggest thing that would aid research in mental illnesses in the practice of psychiatry is to have a diagnostic test for schizophrenia and other major mental illnesses. Um, and I think we're actually close to having that. Uh, we are, have a number of different uh, methodologies that I believe in the foreseeable future will lead to diagnostic tests to assist in the diagnosis of schizophrenia. And what this would do would be to, one, help to improve the rigor and specificity of our diagnosis, and two, it would give us a lot of credibility uh, in the you know, general population that it's not just something that's in people's minds, it's actually in the brain and we can, we can demonstrate it. Without having a diagnostic test, we're kind of in the same situation that, um, let's say, cardiologists or you know, GPs were before when they tried to diagnose uh, a heart attack by saying, you know, are you having chest pain? Before they had an EKG to do or before they could take a blood test, we're sort of on the verge of being able to have this kind of confirmation by laboratory methods to assist our clinical diagnoses. I think uh, the research uh, field uh, in mental illness will uh, move towards and be advanced by a process which is affecting all of biomedical research now, which is called personalized medicine. So uh, we will begin to develop you know, the potential, you know, if not the you know, ultimate uh, you know, fruition of an approach to personalizing uh, diagnosis and treatment for people with mental disorders. Basically, the uh, process which leads to the personalization of medicine is going to just break wide open the field of psychiatric research and transform the way in which uh, psychiatric medicine is practiced and mental health care is provided. Right now, um, we make a diagnosis of a disorder, schizophrenia. Within that disorder is a large population of individuals who are very different from each other. They're grouped together by having these signs and symptoms and likely following a certain course of the illness, but there's tremendous variation with, within it. Um, so it's really through the, mainly through the advance of genetics and the application of genetics research that we're going to really uh, break that into more uh, specific and homogeneous subgroups. Then the genes that allow this will also produce a biology which will lead us to identify targets for drug development and new treatments. The improvement in health care in any area, including mental health care with regard to schizophrenia, is dependent on two things. One is to have the knowledge about the illness and how to treat it, and that, of course, depends on research, and research takes time, and the time frame isn't necessarily predictable. But the second thing is then taking that knowledge and applying it. Um, and oftentimes, when the knowledge is discovered, <clears throat> it doesn't immediately translate into applying it, even though one would think that was the case. Right now, knowing what we know, using pharmacologic treatments, using non-pharmacologic psychosocial treatments, using uh, the process of configuring service delivery and models of care, we could do a lot more than we're currently doing. The problem is, is that the economics of health care and mental health care do not support providing state-of-the-art mental health care services.